See, that's, I mean, that's another thing. When you talk about a revolution, most people think violence. Um, without realizing that the real content of any kind of revolutionary thrust lies in the, in, in the principles and the goals that you're striving for, not in the way you reach them. The Black Power Mixtape, a documentary film designed by Swedish filmmaker Goran Olsen to document the struggles of black Americans, provides activist images for the liberation of black people from the chains of capitalism. The film presents a montage edit of archival images of the late 60s and early 70s to uncover the historical events of the Black Power movements, additionally inducing a voiceover element to provide a multi-dimensional evolution of this revolution. Themes of Black radicalism and despotism of the Black community are prominent themes discussed by the interviews, voiceovers, and archival footage. The inclusion of testimonies and multiple perspectives in this film helps develop a theme that promotes progressive change against oppression and the montage of images help to expose the realities of the conditions for the American people that endure a fight against the injustices set by a corrupt America. Goran Olsen collects archival images of activists, black citizens, and supporters of the Black Power movement and infuses them into a contemporary campaign that represents an evolution of a wage insurgency against the oppressors. The film assembles a chronological collage to exhibit a racial history and the struggle to demand freedom, justice, and equity for black citizens in American communities. Olson, an outsider of American politics, travels to America to expose the intentions of a country that defines itself great, safe, and free. The first interview of the film interrogates Al, the owner of a small beach diner in Hollandale, Florida, a city a few miles from Miami. Olson asks him how the conditions of a working-class American celebrate him. Al responds that any citizen is subdued to significantly better circumstances than any other nation. What would you say are the conditions of life today for an ordinary working man in America? Well, I say uh, for an ordinary man in America, he's better off than any part of the, uh, Europe or any part of the world. He has more freedom, he has more protection, got freedom of speech. Yeah, at least if you don't like your president, you can tell him where to go without being afraid of being put against the wall and shot or being punished. This testimony is spontaneously contrasted with interviews of John and Roger, black Americans who explain their experiences of an opposite America. Almost the same way as before I left. And uh, what, how I, when I say this, because, uh, you know, when a man goes to uh, fight for his country and then come back over here, and have to almost fight for his life, you know, in certain parts of the country, get ridiculed and, you know, and uh, discriminated, you know, and be less than a man. And I don't think it's right, you know? Uh, life hasn't, you know, seemed like it hasn't been, uh, has, has, has ups and downs, I and mean, it hasn't been like I, I was planning for it to be, you know? The opening scenes of the Black Power mixtape explore the subjectivity of the American experience and prove the existence of inequality. These interviews show the disparity of human existence and further inspect a multi-dimensional reality of the Black Power evolution. Progressive change is as much as the theme of the Black Power movement as it is for the film The Black Power Mixtape. Wilson offers varying testimonies and interviews to explain the multiple realities and tolerations of the oppression of black communities under an unforgiving capitalist country. He introduces speeches by black activists such as Stokely Carmichael, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Angela Davis who speak out against injustice, and he offers comments on their progressivism by contemporary artists, authors, lawyers, and professors. Olson calls attention to the ignorance of American politics to the black power movement and exposes the reality of this cultural revolution through truthful images of protests, riots, speeches, and interviews. He encourages a progressive reconstruction of American politics, culture, and media that admires the diversity of an American nation. Instead of waiting for the American people to wake up to the intolerance of black radicalism, Olson represents the evolution of these historical events himself. The assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. accompanies a stronger need for a revolution. Black activists welcome a fight for the security of civil rights for black communities, and Olson represents the consequences of these protests through a montage of archival images. Policemen are beating, arresting and shooting black protesters in the streets, while the voice of Abiodun Owo from an interview excerpt of 2009 comments on these images. The 
exposing the demons that existed in the in America. And he showed you this is America. Look at this. Oywald declares, this is America, and Olsen provides a glimpse into this American reality. Both archival footage and the modern testimony expose the actualities of the American people, providing an authentic replication of the black experience. Further, Olsen encourages progressivism, with the influence of upbeat music over these images of a soul. The combination of uplifting music and footage of protests represent a hopefulness for a new beginning for black Americans. Nonetheless, refreshing perspectives of multiple voiceovers constructs a first-person appliance of experiences of history, validating new insights of endured despotism. Additionally, Erica Badu, a musician, sings a song she was taught in school that monopolizes black culture and society. Her voice sits on top of images that represent hungry children who portion their food before they walk to school. Can I sing? I want a world where kids can play and plenty of food to eat. I want a world where I can speak and know that I'll be free. I want a world just like America, like the USA. Cause even though perfect it's not, it's the best thing this world's got. So we learn not to question our government and be grateful for everything we got. The song implies that there's a vast capitalist influence over black communities and Olsen sets the scene up to represent the government's manipulation of these people and the exploitations of injustice it tries. Olsen exposes the corruption of a society who teases its people with equal opportunity and encourages a betrayal of the constructiveness of an American capitalist society, the politics that neglect the obligation to provide breakfast for free young kids. Yet, Swedish filmmaker Goran Olsen's production to reveal the materiality of American society is repulsed by American media. Robin Kelly, a professor, describes an outside perspective of American politics. This is a period when America's empire really takes off. Besides the war in Vietnam, there are all these other kinds of interventions. Between 1964 and 1972, there are 300 urban rebellions in cities, 60,000 people arrested, billions of dollars worth of property damaged, 250 people killed. Almost all these incidents were caused by some police violence, police brutality. And if you're looking from the outside in, I don't care if you're in Beijing, you're in New Delhi, or you're in Malmo, you're gonna see America with this internal war. It looks like a racist war. International spectators interpret America as lawless, bruised by an internal war, a racist war. Olson's motivations for establishing a montage film of the Black Power movement is implicitly described by Kelly to expose the realities of the internal American debate for employing injustice and inequality. The Swedish filmmaker manipulates time and space to portray an America that is infected by corruptness. He uses various clips of protests that inspire black activism and voices of progressive persons to expose the world beyond the revolution to the multidimensionality of history and the effects it has on black communities. Though, media groups such as TV Guide describe Swedish filmmakers' projects as a distorted image of America, specifically one that is primarily anti-American. Meryl Panet, the editorial director of TV Guide, criticizes Swedish coverage of American news. So that we have a, a uh, more realistic perspective of what's going on in America. Uh, whereas the people in Sweden, people abroad, are not living in America, do not see any of the positive aspects of it, and are getting just the bad news. And this is a thing that I objected to. Where TV Guide views Swedish news as hostile form against Americanism, Emil de Antonio, a filmmaker, explains in an interview with Olsen that the footage is simply a reflection of reality of which Americans refuse in its arousal of paranoia. This scene in Olsen's documentary implies that American media is neglecting to represent the realities and consequences of the injustice committed against black radicalism. Olsen's construction of the evolution of a movement stimulates a new reality that appreciates a reflection of black American experiences. His approach to America's racial history through testimonies, interviews, voiceovers, 
An archival footage recorded in the late 60s and early 70s adopts an intimacy to the brutality displaced by American media. The advantages of this documentary are found in its unforgiving ability to describe the dignity of black community and represent the disparity they face. Olson reports an enticing composition where he uncovers the truths about the historical world in order to criticize the miscarriage of black activism by American media. The strengths of Olson's documentary are found in his displacement of these events, where he criminalizes American politics with an unbiased attitude. He investigates the true intentions of the Black Power movement and encourages activists to tell their story and experiences of their confrontations with revolution. The theme of the importance of evolution and progressive change arrives from the chronological development of history. The theme of evolution is carried out by images on screen and by the formal aspects of the film's composition. The film is split up into chapters. The chapters are represented by the years of the Black Power movement. The evolution of the years represents the slow evolution and progression of black empowerment in the fight against injustice and disparity. The film becomes more powerful with its timeline of chapters because Olsen slowly untangles the historical world and represents a coherent history of the black power movement for his viewers. He shows multiple perspectives and events that constitute the demand for a better America and shows the progression of their battles for equal opportunity, protection, and justice. The Black Power mixtape portrays the multidimensionality of the Black Power movement and the liberation of Black Americans from the tight reign of American politics. Olson's intimate discussion of Black radicalism restores human dimension to the historical world of neglection and betrayal. A.O. Scott describes the intricate collaboration of memoirs in the film. Its impressionistic visual record of recent history is accompanied by the present-day reflections of participants in that history and younger people who have been influenced by it. The archival footage and contemporary interviews respond to the realities and conditions of the American people, displaying a progressive fight for the justice that is still not over.